Hi, I'm making a quick video to walk through the steps of finding the p-value with StatKey. Um, there are a couple of examples in the book that have videos that accompany them that show you how to do this for different situations, but I am going to walk through one now and kind of talk about the steps. So the first thing we need before we go into StatKey is we need to make sure we know what our hypotheses are and what our sample data is. And here I'm given the hypotheses. My null hypothesis is that p is equal to 0.6 and my alternative is that p is not equal to 0.6. So since I'm working with p, I know that p stands for population proportion. I've only got one sample because I've only got one p here, not p1 and p2. Um, so I'm going to be interested in doing a hypothesis test for one proportion. My sample data, I have 142 out of 200 for a p hat of 0.71. Okay, so let's go into stat key. Now to get the randomization distribution so that we can find the p-value, we're going to need to be working over in this area here. And I need to select the test that's appropriate. Now we just saw that I'm working with a single proportion, so I'm going to click in here. Now there are, as with the um, summary statistics and other things that we've done, there are data sets loaded in here. But none of the ones loaded in are the ones that I'm working with. So I'm going to have to edit the data to reflect my own data set. Remember, mine was 142 out of 200. And now that shows up in my original sample data and I see my p hat of 0.71. Now the next thing I need to do is I need to make sure that my null hypothesis is stated correctly. Here my null hypothesis says p is equal to 0.05, but if you recall, I'm testing a hypothesis that p is equal to 0.6, so I need to change that. So I change my p, I click on it and change it to 0.6, and click OK. Now I'm going to have my randomization distribution simulated based on the idea that the null hypothesis is true, that p is really equal to 0.6, and my sample sizes are going to be 200, like my original data sample. So I'm going to generate 1,000 samples. There we go. And if I want to, I can even generate 1,000 more. There we go. All right, so now if I want to find my p-value, this assumes the null hypothesis is true. That's why it's centered at the null value of 0.6. I'm doing a two-tailed test because my alternative hypothesis had a not equal to 0.6 in it. So I'm going to click on two-tail. Now, what I need to do is I need to make it so that my cutoff value here is the same as my, my uh, sample proportion from my original sample. So I click here and change this to 0 0.71. Click OK. Okay, now, because I'm doing a two-tailed test, I can see the proportion of these dots in my randomization distribution that are out at my observed statistic and beyond is 0 0.001. But because I'm doing a two-tailed test, I need to double this. So my p-value is going to be 0 0.001 times 2, which gives me a p-value of 0 0.002. If I were doing a one-tailed test, I wouldn't need to double it. So now I can go back in here and I can enter my p-value, 0 0.002, and I can check my answer. And it's correct. So hopefully that helps you as you're trying to work with stat key to find p-values. If you need more help um, with one of the other scenarios, like two means, two proportions, or something like that, just send me a message and I will post another video. Thanks.